Dillian White is victorious with a fourth round stoppage against Alexander Povekin in Povekin White 2, the rematch. It was last Saturday. Guys, welcome to the video. Sam Logue here, as always, for Green Blood Boxing. Thank you very much for tuning into the channel. And thank you very much for watching this video. Before we go anywhere, please remember to like, share and subscribe. Comment on the video as well. It does all really help me out, especially subscribe to the channel. And please do follow us on Instagram, Boxing Green Blood, at Boxing Green Blood. So, let's get into it. Dylan White wins by fourth round stoppage in, let's face it, like just for me, pretty much a complete and utter domination. You know, really dominant performance. Um, almost kind of steamrolled through Pavek Pavekin, in my opinion. I know that's not an opinion that everyone shares, but I just thought he was in complete control and he kind of bull he bullied Pavekin for the most of this fight. Um, for the most part, you know, really, really impressed. From, from the first bell, he was calculated, he was smart, but he was looking to land heavy shots and whenever he had a, a chance, he was really putting that pressure on and um, and really putting Pavekin under pressure to do something now. I think he set a really fast pace, Dylan. And, uh, and you could really see the size difference in there as well. You know, you could really see, he, he, they, yeah, it almost looked like two different weight classes. Like Dylan, Dylan was cuffing him, you know, cuffing shots, hitting him with kind of with the arms and with the inside of the glove at times and stuff, you know, just a little bit sloppy, some of the work, but you could see the sheer power. You know, he was knocking Pavekin all over the place. He was losing his foot and he was just getting pushed all around the ring. and. He losing his balance, etc. It was really uh, you could just see that massive size and weight difference, um, and strength difference. And as I say, I think it was actually a, quite a technical performance from Dillian as well. Really calculated. He was very careful not to let Pavekin have any easy opportunities. The only opportunities Pavekin really had, him, from what I could see, was when Dillian was close and was punching. Pavekin would punch with him, which is something that he does. But, you know, I, t I thought Dylan did a good job of taking his head off the line, especially when he was throwing the overhand right and kind of keeping himself fairly safe for the most part. Um, he was good on his legs as well. Obviously, good job, as Dylan White has. Um, yeah, really, really impressive. And, of course, um, a really nice stoppage. It was a beautiful 1-2 that, uh, that really started it, started it off in the fourth round and then uh, a couple more shots and the big left hook to finish. It was, a, it was a really top performance and I think that cements Dylan's place back in that top three or four. I would probably say number three after, um, after Fury and Joshua just because of the, the wins on his record, the consistency of fighting top level opponents and obviously for the most part winning. Um, and even against Pavekin in the first fight was, was I think fair enough to say he was winning the fight. Um, obviously he had two knockdowns. He wasn't absolutely dominating, but he was winning the fight and he looked like pretty much in control until he, he obviously got caught with just a, a really, really good punch. Obviously lost his focus a bit, allowed Pavekin to gain that territory and, and land that shot. So fair enough, great win by Pavekin in the first fight. But um, I think Dylan, you know, level-wise, you know, ability-wise and op opponent-wise, who he's faced, I think he's proven time and time again that he is that number three guy. And um, by beating Pavekin in the rematch, but not just beating him, like destroying him, like manhandling him from round one, I think he really does cement this place again in uh, in that number three. So I want to move on and talk a little bit more about Dylan. Talk about where he goes from here. I think there's there's a few fights. Um, he has obviously mentioned a few fights himself. I think the big one on everyone's lips is Deontay Wilder. I would absolutely love to see that. I think that is the best fight. I think that's, yeah, for so many reasons, it's the best fight for Dylan White. I think, first of all, it's, it's very winnable. It's the biggest name um, outside of the champions. Um, it's obviously very lucrative. Uh, you know, I, I just think it, it does a lot. You know, it has a, bi a big build up. It, you know, it's a very good fight itself as well. Dylan's always in good fights. Wilder is often in good fights as well. 
So I think um, I think it kind of has has so many aspects or so many elements to it that make it a, a really exciting event and really exciting uh, fight itself. So that would really be the one I would want to see. But Dylan has obviously come out and kind of said, you know, that he wants a, a little bit of an easier fight. You know, he's always in these really, really tough matchups. And he mentioned Trevor Bryant for the WBA regular title. You know, I actually don't, I don't hate that fight. I actually like that fight for Dylan. I think he kind of deserves it in a way. He's had a lot of very hard fights. He's had a lot of top contender fights, former world champions, um, in Pavek and in Parker, obviously, you know, he's had a lot of really hard fights back to back. You know, the two Chisora fights were very hard fights. You know, both of them, Chisora really uh, showing up and putting on mass, like really above par performances against Dylan White in both of those fights. So I think, you know, when the Rivas fight was a hard fight and, you know, he's had a couple here and there that weren't as as hard, you know, Lucas Brown and uh, uh, perhaps uh, the Marius Vach. Even that was a little bit, you know, he had to kind of labour to a decision there. I thought Vach actually boxed quite well in that fight. But, you know, for the most part, Dylan has had hard fights against good names and, uh, you know, fairly top contenders. So I think he kind of deserves a slightly... You know, Trevor Bryant's a good fighter, but I think you'd have to argue... Uh, most people would agree, I think, that Trevor Bryant is a, is a bit of a step down from Pavek and, uh from Joe Parker... And debate, you know, debatably even from from Chisora, the way Chisora is operating at the moment, Chisora is really boxing very well. You know, obviously put up a very good fight against Usyk. Um, has had a couple of good wins. Obviously performed very well against Dylan in both fights. Um, and obviously has won uh, some some good fights, as I say, against the uh, Takam, Spilke. You know, good good like world level guys. Kind of, I suppose, in and around Trevor Bryant's level, you would have to probably say. Um, but yeah, I think it's 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 a good fight for Dylan. He deserves it. I don't know how many people. I don't. I wouldn't really count the WBA regular title as as Dylan being champion. But you know, it's a belt, and I I would I would think ooh, I might be wrong here. I, I wonder if he'd be able to still keep his WBC interim title and the WBC diamond title. Perhaps, perhaps not. It does depend because I know a lot of the other sanctioned bodies don't necessarily see the WBA regular title as a legitimate world title. So we may be able to hold the WBC diamond title and interim title alongside the WBA regular title. Um, or he may not. I'm, you know, I'm really, I'm really not too sure. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, I think it's, it would be, it's a good fight even if he doesn't kind of... Uh, hold on to the title or even if he doesn't because you'd, you'd imagine he would keep the WBC titles right um, rather than relinquish them for the WBA regular title but you know it's it's, it's hard to know but I think it's a good fight um, I don't know overly too much about Trevor Bryant but I think it's a bit of a step down and it's a Dylan would go in as a big favourite the other fight I would really like to see Dylan in is the uh, the Andrew Ruiz fight I think Andrew Ruiz obviously has a fight coming up against uh, Chris Ariola, which uh, is on pay-per-view which is its own kind of video for another day um, obviously you know I think anyone who knows a bit about boxing would be favouring Andrew Ruiz massively in that fight I think he wins that one very very easily uh, and if he comes through that fairly unscathed then why not match him up with Dylan White I think it's an absolutely excellent fight great clash of styles um, Dylan obviously with the with the really good jab and ever improving aspect and and really good IQ Dylan has a good understanding of you know where to be in the ring and kind of how to get the job done I think and he's very calm under pressure but Ruiz obviously brings out really fast hands and he's obviously gonna have dropped a lot of weight he's with a really good team now with uh, Canelo's team and Eddie Reynoso as his coach so I think he'll be a fleet of a lot more f a fleet of foot and um, I think his his game plan and stuff will be will be good. So I think that's a really interesting fight. I think they're probably the, the debatably the next best, the three next best guys, especially on their on their day. Um I think Ruiz, to be fair to him, like, you know, he's had two losses, one to Joshua who we beat, and one to Joseph Parker, and a lot of people think he won that fight as well. That was for the WBO world title back when Parker won it. You know, so 
Um, and Andy Ruiz has kind of always looked good in his fights, even since the loss to Parker. You know, so I think they're they're the, probably the next best three for me. I think Wilder still he has something to prove now when he comes back. He needs to show that he's still that he's still there and he still has something to give. But I think you can't write him off just on the basis of losing to Fury. Um, the obviously in the last fight, which is just over a year ago now. But yeah, maybe a couple of other fights that I wouldn't mind seeing. I mean, you know, Pulev, who obviously just boxed AJ, actually boxed Toddy Box pretty well against AJ, decent enough. Obviously, they passed it and was never really, you know, at that very top level as in, you know, you know, world champion standard. But, you know, on the periphery for a long time, has a lot of good wins. He obviously beat uh, Chisora, has beaten kind of Huey Fury. You know, he's beaten some good, some good guys. Obviously, other names as well that I can't think of right now, but... You know, just to name two two British names. So yeah, like there's guys like um like Pulev, Michael Hunter, Hergovic, Joyce coming up, Usyk. There's a lot. I think there's a lot of good names, and obviously I'm gonna miss out a couple there as well. But there's there's some good names there for Dylan White as well. But um yeah, but I would really like to see him in with either. I think Trevor Bryant's a good fight for his next fight. Perhaps or hopefully be able to get that WBA regular title as well with the WBC titles that he has. And then, uh, and then look to fight either Wilder or Ruiz. I would prefer Wilder. I just think it's a big, it's a really big build up. It's a big fight, and it's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's just a great fight. Wilder can end anyone's night with one punch, but um, it'd be very. I think Dillian White has has enough to beat him. Especially the ring IQ and the kind of able to map out the route to victory. I think he can do that. Um, quite well and I think because of that and because there is a very obvious blueprint on how to beat Deontay Wilder now um, unless he's unless he's uh, done miracles in the background you know in the last year training with some other good coach or you know practicing to get those things better um, I unless he's been doing that I think uh, there is a bit of a blueprint at the moment to beat him and I think White is good enough and clever enough to be able to to enact a, a good or carry out a good game plan to to actually take advantage of that blueprint as i say but yeah it's exciting times for dylan white and you know on the back of that performance as i say you have to regard him i think as number three in the division and uh, yeah i can't wait to see what's next but hopefully he gets a fight announced hopefully we're not left you know waiting for too long over the next few months um hopefully he gets back as he as he wants to as he said many occasions he doesn't really want to be hanging around he, he'd happily um fight every few months and have he said he wants to have three fights this year so let's hope he gets those three fights in um i wouldn't mind the trevor bryan fight as i said and then either wilder or ruiz for me would be the next one which would be absolutely perfect um yeah so let's hope and let's see how it goes but guys, thanks very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me, and I really, really appreciate it. Follow me on Instagram, at Boxing Green Blood. And uh, keep an eye out for some interviews that are coming up, and some recent interviews that I've done. Uh, I really do appreciate the support. So thanks very much for tuning in, guys, and peace.